Joining me for Worldview with Dennis Campbell is Dennis Campbell, editor-in-chief of UK Progressive Magazine and host of Worldview Show on YouTube. Check it out at uh, youtube.com slash worldview show. So, Dennis, Cyprus has a deadline of Monday to secure a new agreement for a bailout. And we've seen in U.S. news a lot of headlines about Cyprus considering one-time uh, bank taxes of different amounts and different proposals have been seen there. So before we talk about the proposals, set the stage for people who, not may, who may not understand the position of Cyprus within the EU. Uh, I think that's a good place to start. Well, yeah, and, and, and it's probably a good place to start with where is Cyprus on the map and what is its <laughs> history. Cyprus is, is half controlled by the Greek government, which means it's part of the EU, but the other half is controlled by the Turkish government. So you, you have uh, people in Cyprus that are of both descents, and it's almost, in some respects, like East and West Germany. There's been a lot of uh, conflict over the years there. So when we talk about the bailout of the, the banks in Cyprus, we're talking about the Greek or EU side of, uh, of uh, Nicosia, the capital city. And uh, what they're pretty much doing is they've got a bunch of banks there that uh, are extraordinarily large for the size of the country. Cyprus itself makes up about 0.7%, that's less than a percent of the Eurozone gross domestic product, yet they have these huge dis disproportionately sized banks, and they owe about 25 billion euros, that's uh, 25 billion dollars, excuse me, about 19 billion euros in debt. So they're not terribly vital to the EU, but they've got this huge disproportionate uh, bank offshore uh, tax havens. And they're basically blackmailing the EU for a bailout, and that bailout is not likely to come because they're relatively insignificant in size. So we had a situation where people earlier this week were kind of flocking to the ATMs or cash machines, as they're known there, and withdrawing money kind of ahead of the possibility of this bank tax being levied. Uh, initially, there were there were thoughts of 15 or as high as 20 percent. But what's the latest proposal at this point? Well, just about three hours ago, and, you know, you and I are talking at about 4 p.m., uh, uh, actually 5 p.m., uh, Central European time, uh, what's happened is that they've taken the bank tax off of the table. So it was an up to a 10% levy, which basically seized 10% of the deposits. And they froze all the accounts. They wouldn't allow electronic withdrawals of any kind. So basically, if you had a lot of money in the banks in Cyprus, it's just sort of sitting there. But most of those deposits belong to Russians, to Germans, and to UK expats, because it was an offshore tax haven for them. And interestingly enough, the governments of those three nations moved in very quickly to guarantee the deposits of their country holders. So, so if you were a, uh, a UK um, soldier stationed abroad there, your money was protected by the British government. Now, this is an example of many years ago, we used to have uh, a call across the EU devaluations of currency during periods of high inflation. Um, and a lot of people remember those days. So the biggest fear the Cyprus government has right now in the central bank is a run on the bank. That's why the banks will remain closed in Cyprus until next Tuesday at the absolute earliest. So uh, we're waiting to see what's going to happen. And there's a bunch of possible plan Bs here. Um, they, they're trying, of course, to get a better EU deal. Uh, there's also uh, been a lot of, of talk lately. I saw something on Al Jazeera earlier this afternoon saying that there's a possibility that they could do a deal with the Russians to capitalize the banks in exchange for the leases to their gas reserves. Now, that would be their natural gas reserves are very big on that island, or they could just default altogether and exit the Eurozone. But Germany is about to have an election this fall. They're already in the process, the EU, of bailing out Ireland, Greece, Portugal. And I think this is just another example of how fragile the recovery, how fragile the austerity system has been across the EU. Yeah, so I guess that's the, kind of the next question. 0.7% of, e, of the Eurozone GDP is in Cyprus, but of course a lot of, uh, of foreign money being held there. What is the thought in other EU countries about this? Is it, well, listen, this is a very unique situation in Cyprus, and we don't really need to worry about similar things happening within our country, or is it as you say, an indication of we all need to be worried. Well, I mean, if you talk to the Tories, they're going to say nothing to see here, move along. Uh, you know, they're the ones that are in control of the UK government. They put their budget out yesterday, a very big, splashy uh, ceremony called Budget Day. Uh, it's immediately being savaged, of course, by the opposition side. <laughs> 
but there's a lot of sorts of a lot of sorts of uh, you know perks in there for things like fracking and tax relief uh, for businesses but it is almost completely devoid of the economic reality that we're about to enter now a quadruple dip recession here in the United Kingdom and when you have this kind of a shockwave all the markets opened lower on Tuesday, uh, the, the, the Monday, excuse me, the day after they announced it. Last weekend was what's known as a, a bank holiday or a three-day weekend in Cyprus. So the banks were already scheduled to remain closed, and this announcement happened on Friday. So most of the panic was over the weekend, and, and you know you always save your bad news until Friday afternoon, and that's exactly what the government did in this case. So we're worried mostly from the shock of, Who's next or what happens next if a major government uh, sovereign debt goes under or if we have a situation where, you know, a bank system's capital is not enough to sustain it. They need about $10 billion right now to get the capital up to where it needs to be in Cyprus. They don't have it. So they thought they could grasp at least uh, half, if not more of it directly from depositors. But it's not related to Greece in any way. And it's just a, a crazy situation. All right. So step one will be to see what happens by Monday's deadline. And then, of course, we'll have an opportunity to figure out uh, what will the uh, cascading effects, if any, be in other <laughs> countries. Uh, we've been speaking with Dennis Campbell, host of Worldview Show on YouTube. Dennis, what's coming up on Worldview Show? Uh, coming up tonight on the on the clip that we'll load will be Juliana Ferlano, who is a woman we both know who runs an amazing website called Absurdity Today. Very funny. A lot of fun. And for tomorrow, we've got a wonderful clip from a woman who writes something called the Hill Navigator, which is sort of the Dear Abby column for all of those on Capitol Hill. So it's a virtual city within a city up there, and they do their own thing. And it's kind of interesting that they've got within their own magazine and their own newspaper, their daily, this uh, Dear Abby column. We'll talk to Rebecca Gale about what's it like with all of those situations. All right. Make sure to subscribe. Democrats and Republicans are sleeping together. You have to be careful. Yeah. So uh, we, we need to be up to speed. <laughs> I'm going to rev be reviewing all the evidence when that clip comes out. Uh, YouTube.com <laughs> slash Worldview Show. Subscribe so you don't miss any of the new videos. Dennis, uh, thanks as always. And we'll talk to you next week. Thank you. Have a great weekend, everybody.